Hey everybody, Star Six Wars One here, and welcome to another anime review. For this one, we take a look back at the anime film, The End of Evangelion. Now, this anime movie was made a year after the original ended due to the outcry of people who hated how the original series ended. Now, this video will contain spoilers for the original series due to the nature of this movie. So, I'd say watch the series first before watching this review. With all that out of the way, let's get started. Our story begins as Shinji Kari tries to wake a comatose Asuka to have her help him because of him having to kill the only person who was kind to him and his fear of Rei Masato. It doesn't go well. In the meantime, Sele puts their plan into motion as Nerve now must defend themselves against Sele and prevent third impact from happening, or else the human race could pay the price. Now, the first half of the movie is very action-packed and tense, as you can feel the near-hopeless situation that Nerve is facing. While the second half has more the psychological side that Ava is known for, surprisingly, it does both wonderfully, and neither feel forced, which is actually really impressive. The movie also ties all of the plot lines of the series up, which is impressive in and of itself as well. There's a lot left to interpretation, which can be seen as confusing, possibly to some as convoluted, but for me, it adds rewatch value to see what it all means. The story to the end of Ava is one of the most impressive in all of anime, and one that shouldn't be ignored if not only for how well it succeeded. Let's face it, it could have easily backfired, but the story turned out really, really well. And that's why I think it should never be ignored. For the characters, let's start with Shinji. As the movie starts, Shinji is psychologically broken. He has become afraid of Rei because of learning of her true nature. His friends have left Tokyo 3 due to the danger that had gone through. He had killed Kaoru, who was the only person kind to him. He doesn't want to interact with Misato due to her emotional coldness to Kaoru's death. For most of the movie, he is near comatose due to his inaction during the first part of the movie. And while I can see why people dislike him in the movie for this, you have to remember the shit he's been through during the series, so it makes sense that he's like this. Anyways, he does become more active in the second half, at the very least. Honestly, I don't mind Shinji in the movie, but I do get why some dislike him here. Next up is Asuka, who literally is comatose due to being mind-raped near the end of the series. So you'd think she wouldn't be important to the story. Well, if you thought that, you would be very wrong. Once she awakens, she goes into badass mode, and she concludes her story arc. Honestly, I really like Asuka in the movie. Not only was she badass, but I feel that they concluded her character rather well. Honestly, a great character for the movie. Next, we have Rei, who at this point is the last of the Reis, and her time is also coming to an end. i like to get more into Rei, but honestly, if I did, I'd go into heavy spoilers for the movie, and I'd rather not. Though, like Asuka, they conclude her character rather well, and she was an interesting character to watch to begin with, so I am impressed. Lastly, for the individual characters I want to talk about, we have Misato, who is distrusting of Nerve's leaders for what they have been hiding in the series. Misato is also pretty badass in the movie as well, and like the other characters, they conclude her character rather well. Honestly, not much else I can say beyond that. She's a great character in the movie. The rest of the characters have the same treatment of being good to great, and their characters feel concluded. Honestly, I love the cast of The End of Ava. Just well done, especially when you've seen the series. The animation is once again done by Studio Gainax. However, this time they are joined by Production IG, who is well known for Ghost in the Shell, Kiriko in a Basket, Jinro, and they also helped Gainax with FLCL as well. The animation is actually really well done. It looks in many places better than the original series did. The character designs are distinctive, the backgrounds look well made, the fight scenes look even better than in the series, and it has one of the best uses of live action in anime to date. 
It does have a few limited animation moments and some other minor little things that people could get annoyed about. But aside from those, the animation is some of the best of its time. Now for the music, Shiro Sakisu, I hope I pronounced his name right, returns to compose the music for the end of Eva. I'm going to be honest, the OST is even better than the series. It sets the tone of the movie rather well, and even without the movie, it is a great listen. It has many memorable tracks like Tanen no Kanshio, Itsuwari no Saisei, Thanatos If I Cannot Be Yours, and Calm Scissor Todd, to name a few. It has no opening nor ending unless you count Thanatos If I Can't Be Yours, which is a great either way. Now, should you see this subbed or dubbed? Even if you like the dub of the original series for the end of Ava, I recommend the sub. It is far better acted and adds so much more than the dub had, as well as certain voices can take away from the experience of the movie, even more so than the series if I'm going to be honest. So I'd say stick with the sub. This movie is absolutely fantastic. It has everything the original series has and more, which for a movie is very hard to do. It concludes all the plot points that the series introduces, it concludes the character arcs the series built up, it concludes Neon Genesis Evangelion. There is nothing quite like the end of Evangelion, and all that tried to copy it afterward failed. As far as movies go, it has no equivalent. I once hated this movie and thought it was awful, but now not only has it become my favorite anime film, but my favorite film in general. It's not for everyone, but for those who enjoy it like myself, we see past the few flaws it has and see something truly unique and brilliant. I'd watch this movie if you completed Neon Genesis Evangelion or want to see something unlike any other movie and want an anime that makes you think. The only reason I really can think of that I wouldn't see the movie is if you haven't seen the series. Besides that, I think every anime fan should see this movie at least once. Because it's a brilliant film that everyone sees differently as an experience that shouldn't be ignored. For alternate anime recommendations, I point you towards another Gainax anime, Gunbuster. If you want to see an anime that the creator of Ava made before Ava that is also similar to Ava, but at the same time different, I recommend Gunbuster. I also recommend Serial Experiments Lane, as it's another anime that makes you think, and that is a, tr a unique anime in its own right, though be ready to be confused when watching Lane. I know I will be. As a last thing, I want to say thank you, Gainax, and thank you, Haidekiano, for making this wonderful anime. Anyways, that's all from me. This has been Star Six Wars 1, and I'll see you guys next time.